Senator Gregg. Thank you. Uh, let me join my colleagues in thanking you for your efforts in putting your dollars behind your language on the issue of education especially. And I agree with you that the issue is at the high school level. And when Senator Kennedy and I were putting together No Child Left Behind, we focused on math science because it was a quantitative event. But we didn't get into the high school because the federal government really doesn't have a role in high school. We don't fund high school. But one place we do have a role is in this area of immigration, which you've mentioned. And uh, I'm also in total agreement with your view, which I would characterize and maybe inappropriately as going around the world and picking the best and the brightest and having come to the United States. Uh, and that's what we've done as a culture, and we've been very successful. So I guess my first question to you is, do you have a number that you think we need relative to the H-1B visa program? Uh, Today, it's statutorily set at about 65,000, but we're up to about 120,000. Do you think that number should be raised to 200,000, 300,000? What, what, what would make America give us the capacity to get the people we need to come here to take advantage of our society and we take advantage of their abilities? Well, my, my basic view is that an infinite number of people coming who are taking jobs that pay over 100,000 a year you know, they're going to pay taxes. We create lots of other jobs around those people. You know, my, my basic view is that the country should welcome as many of those people as we can get because people of those great talents, particularly in uh, engineering areas, the jobs are going to exist somewhere and the jobs around them are going to be created wherever those uniquely talented people are. So, uh, even though it may not be realistic, I don't think there should be any limit. You know, other countries have systems where, based on your education, your employability, you're scored for immigration. And so these people would not have difficulty getting into other rich countries. In fact, you know, countries like Canada and Australia have been beneficiaries of our uh, system discouraging these people with both the limits and the, the long waits and the... the what the process feels like uh, as, as they go through the security checks. There are some suggestions about if we could, uh, uh, in, say in the green card system, not have to count the family members. Uh, if you uh, somewhat more than doubled that, you could start to clear the backlog and not have that be a problem. Likewise with H-1B, if you uh, had a few categories, like people who are educated here in this country, uh, that you gave an exemption outside of the quota uh, that uh, uh, somewhat more than doubling would get us what we need. But that, you know, to some degree, that's sort of like a centrally managed economy. Uh, so, unfortunately, you know, we'll, we'll uh, because my time's going to be up, but sorry. unfortunately, that's what we have here. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I, could, I agree 100 percent that we shouldn't have a limit on highly skilled people coming into the country, but we do have a centrally managed economy, and right now it's not being managed well. So uh, I would presume that if we were to double the number, say to 300,000, you wouldn't have any problem with that since you're willing to go to infinity. Well, it would be a fantastic improvement. And I do think that uh, there's a, a draft bill uh, that has provisions that would largely take care of this, this problem. We also have something called a lottery system, which allows 50,000 people in the country simply because they win a lottery and they could be a a truck driver from the Ukraine, and last year I offered an amendment which would have taken that system and required 60 percent of those to be people with advanced degrees in order to participate in the lottery. So you'd have to be a physicist from <laughs> Ukraine before you could uh, win the lottery. Do you think that would be a better approach, maybe? Well, I don't, I'm not an expert on the various categories uh, that exist, and um, you know, I don't actually know that lottery system. Uh, I know the engineers at Microsoft, nobody comes up to me and says, say, hey, I won this lottery. So, uh, you know. Well, that's the, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of different categories in there, um, you know, and I'm not sure how they, they should all be handled. But I do know in the case of the engineering uh, situation, you know, we should specifically have that be dramatically in increased. Thank you. <coughs> Normally, uh, Mr. Gates would have Senda Murray here. She's chairing a Veterans <coughs> Committee at this uh, time, and I think we understand the importance of that, at, particularly at this time. 
so she is necessarily absent. Wanted to be <coughs> extend her wishes. Senator Clinton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and welcome, Mr. Gates. We're delighted to have you. Um, Senator Enzi made reference to Sputnik 50 years ago, and one of the um, ongoing results of that um, event was to really focus America's attention on what we needed to do with math and science education uh, to try to provide loans for school, the NDEA 